This is part two, 2008 Country Coach Intrigue brake caliper foul on the ride well suspension chassis rail. So this is going to show you the modification I done. I mean, other people may have different modifications, but uh, I can't see what way they would come up with to resolve this issue other than to do the same modification. Anyway, be interested to see how other people do this, even if they do it. If they're not aware of it, I haven't seen anything in the past on this. So if there has been, I'd be interested in finding out just to see how they resolved it. Um, but certainly it's not something Country Coach were made aware of in all the time that um, they were building these. And I'd imagine if it was known, Premier RV, um, Oregon Motor Coach, the places that dealt with this, even the place where this was um, in for some repair two years ago on the body, they would have probably told me about it if they knew about it. But um, I had lots of conversations with them about coach and different issues, but not, not a word on this. Anyway, so this is the final solution. You can see I've uh, machined out, I've ground out actually, um, and I'll probably do another video on all the tools that I've used to do this. Different types of axle stands, the jacks, safety equipment that I use, grinders, etc, etc. I'll do a video on that in case anybody's interested to see that. So Here we have the, the finished product. I'm going to paint this and I'll um, share all the paints and preps that I've used on this one later as well in another video. You know, otherwise it would just take up too much time. So what I've done, I have ground out, used an angle grinder and a 40 grit rotary pad in this. And I took out this area. And as you can see, underneath, it has not intruded into any structural member. Plenty grays, but you can see this web, it's a box section that's welded up all the way around. So what I've done by taking this little piece of the web out has that no significance on this structurally whatsoever. But anyway, this is the end part. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the caliper back on and show you the clearances I've got without the dust cap and with the dust cap. This is the caliper that's been removed. I've cleaned it up, made sure it's all lubed up okay and working. This is the particular part that is fouling. This is the adjuster mechanism with the dust cap. If I take the dust cap off, you can see inside you have this aluminum cap that's used to do the adjustments. When you rotate this, it rotates these pressure plungers in and out and gives you the required clearance. And it's an auto adjust as well as the brake pads wear down. This thing auto adjusts. So anyway, you take this cap off. This is just a spline cap, 10 millimeter as mentioned. It's made out of aluminum and it goes onto that mechanism there, which adjusts it. And the whole purpose of this cap is to ensure you do not put too much pressure and torque on this mechanism, which inside could damage it. And from all the literature I've been reading, you can't buy kits to repair this. It's a new caliber and they're expensive. Anyway, so there's the cap that goes back on. Here's the dust cap. That goes on. There's a the dust cap on. And I'll um, now install this back onto the, the coach and show you what clearances I've got. Just to show you what movement you should have on these calipers when it's fully depressed and pulled in. Although it's not gonna go that far because the brake pad won't allow it to go that far. But nevertheless, when it's out, the brake pads are out, you've got an awful lot of travel on this caliper. And as you can see from the other video, I had that much travel, wasn't anything. So I'll put this back on the coach. Here we have the caliper installed back onto the coach temporarily with two bolts. It's tightened up so everything's gonna show the right fit and finish and movement. And this one's got the a new brake cap pad in just to show you where it sits. So there's a new brake pad. This here is a wear marker. New brake pad. When it wears down to the maximum, you'll see that this mark 
we'll align with this mark. Now, if you look at the back, with a new pad in, when it was before, there, you can basically see that the rubber cap was touching the, the frame. So now, with the rubber cap all the way, or the new pad in, you can see the clearance that we've got here. If I take the pad out, so this is with a pad out, and the caliper pushed all the way back. With the caliper going in to the max wear marker, which is there, and you can see there's not a lot of clearance in there. It's basically the thickness of the metal and a couple of millimeter of pad, which is the legal limits for pads. You can see that I am not touching at all on that rail anymore. I've got full clearance. It's not going to do any damage to this caliper whatsoever. So this is what it looks like now with the rubber boot in. I've got the sun coming through the window, so it's um, tending to cause a little bit of blurring. And as it comes in, let's get that sun out there, shall we? Beautiful, a nice fit in there. No degradation, but a fully functional brake caliper again. As I say, this wasn't a brake caliper issue. It was an installation issue where it was binding. So nothing against Bendix. It's not their issue. It's not Ridewell suspension issue. It is basically the way these two systems interacted and whoever the system engineer was that put this together and looked at the packaging didn't do a very good job. Anyway, there we have it. It's got the adjuster mechanism in, inside already. The aluminum cap which I'm gonna leave in. This doesn't harm to leave it in, doesn't harm to take it out. If you wanna adjust the brakes. Now, the other thing with this, you can actually even adjust the brakes still because previously you wouldn't get a socket up there and I should have taken a video of that, but you wouldn't have got a socket on there very easily to adjust the brakes because the rail member was in the way. So here we go. Now it's just a case of taking the caliper off, painting the caliper, put a bit of protection on it, Stop it corroding, it's not gonna do any harm. I mean, the coach is 2008, and it's not bad as it is, just aesthetically not pleasing. I'm gonna put a bit of paint on this so it just protects it a little bit, clean it up, and then I will show you when everything's back on and when it's all finished. We're getting on, we just um, got it cleaned up, got it painted, give it a little bit more protection. There's a caliper cleaned up, new brake shoes and these are the items that you get in the kit when you get the brake shoes you get the new springs the retaining bar here's the aluminum cap that you get a spare and replace plus the pin the washer and the locking and you get two size dust caps depending on which one you're putting on so there's the bolts all cleaned up they do recommend Once you put new pads in you've already backed off the adjuster you take it all the way back you'll hear it ratcheting, clicking. And as it clicks back, it will take the sliders, the pistons in the calipers, two of them, it will ratchet the pistons back in, which gives you plenty of room to put the new pads in. Once you put the pads in, put the brace, the new pin, washer and clip, you come back round to the back and you tighten this up You tighten it up on the on the ratchet. Now it won't ratchet when you tighten when you tighten it. It just goes around. You don't hear anything. So you'll hear the you'll feel it go tight, and then you'll check the rotor. Once the rotor's not rotating anymore, then you come back here and you back this off two clicks. And you listen, one, two. That gives you the free, the pre, pre adjustment for the free play on the pads and then it'll auto adjust once you start running. So once you've done that, you put the new cap back on. This is not gonna slide in and out now because it's, but you can see once these pads start wearing down, they've got no foul, condition in here anymore 
and it'll be fine. So that's my solution to this problem. I hope it's helped you. And um, I'm just gonna finish wrapping it up. Thought I'd um, take a one more video and add to it, uh, just showing you the clearances that we've got in here now around this brake caliper. When it adjusts in, the brake pads wear down, you'll go the way through. When you look down from the top, you can see you didn't have a lot of clearance there before it hit from the um, initial design. So anyway, it's cleaned up okay. This is what it looks like. Bit more protection on there. Cleaned up. 2008, cleaned some of the rust off. While I'm under here, reprotected it. I've just been I'm reading some good. of the comments left by you guys. Um, one of them was, how much pad life was left once this caliper bottomed out on the rail here, where the aluminum cap was bottoming out. So the new calipers are 30 mil. The old caliper one came out of that position Twenty six and a half mil. So three and a half, four mil pad wear. That's all I got out of that before it put bottomed out and jammed. It wouldn't have gone much more, and this pad on the on this side, the brakes would have faded even more. They would have become weaker and weaker as that pad finally gave up and it wouldn't pull in anymore. So thirty mil to twenty six mil is what I am seeing on my particular coach as a result of that particular foul condition. So yeah, quarter life, if that, of the actual pad. Anyway. So while I've got these wheels off, I thought I would um, see if there's any interest in seeing how I clean the wheels up from this. This is the inside of the main drive wheel, the outside is here it's going to be cleaned up as well the inside and this is the inner wheel you can see how corroded this is so if there's any interest on seeing how i've been cleaning up these wheels um, inside and outside going from that to this which i'm pretty happy with let me know and um I'll shoot a video of what I do, what I use. It's not that hard actually. It's probably about two hours work to do this, if that. But I take the wheels off when I do it. So let me know. See ya.